If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, what are some of your weirdest slash scariest paranormal experiences? The cameras at my work are programmed to flick to areas of motion when they are inactive. One night at like 3 a.m. when I was alone for a four block radius, all of them flicked to the door right outside of my office. There are 190 separate camera feeds. So I used to work in a grocery store, small store, so we didn't have a specific job we did, like cashier, but all of us did what was needed and we felt like that day. If you didn't feel like you wanted to deal with customers, you could just do inventory or stock shelves. Nice job. First I noticed something weird was when I was doing the evening shift before closing. My coworker was with me, it was a slow evening and he was taking a break downstairs. So I was checking best before dates from products near the cash register and in front of the doors. I was completely alone and suddenly I heard the heavy, metal door shut close that lead to the break room. I just thought, while well, my coworker is coming back up, nothing unusual, didn't even bother to turn around. Until my coworker runs to me and asks did I go downstairs a minute ago. I said no, I've been here the whole time and the only one here. He asks am I sure? I say I am completely sure and see him freaking out a bit and he is not a man who freaks out easily, for example, we had a theft and he ran after the thief until he gave him back what he stole. So he starts checking the whole store, which is really not big, and no one is found. Okay, we still call our boss in case it is a robbery or something, and he comes by. We watch the security tape and see the heavy metal door slightly opening and closing, but no one going. After this incident my coworker says he has heard footsteps after closing, but never found anyone. So another evening shift, I'm the cashier again and working with my other coworker. He is checking the freezer in the back, so I'm alone in the store. This old lady comes in and I greet her from the cash register. She doesn't answer, whatever, people often don't. I'm bored so I decide to follow her trough the security monitor. She just walks around and goes to a blind spot, so I don't see her trough cameras. But she never comes out. I'm waiting, thinking WTF, pretty sure this place is haunted by now. I go to that all and there's no one there. My coworker comes to let me go home and asks is the store empty. I tell him what happened and he just shrugs, saying he has seen the old lady and doesn't get it either. Western Oklahoma at my grandparents when I was 6 years old. My older sister and I convinced our grandpa to let us sleep on the porch. He had a border collie that was fiercely protective of us. Anyway, sometime in the middle of the night my sister wakes me up. There was a shed about 50 feet away and floating next to it was a ball of light. It had a diameter of about 4 to 6 feet, it made absolutely no sound, and it was not moving at all. I was scared, but my sister thought it would be a good idea to walk towards it to see what it was. She got about halfway and it shot off at about 90 degrees into the sky without making any noise. Never did figure out what it was. And no, the dog did nothing except kind of hide. I have extensive hypnagogia where I can experience sleep paralysis and sometimes even sleepwalk while being aware of my surroundings. When I experience hypnagogia I see shadows move about quickly all around me and hear whispers from them. It's a frightening experience and I always woke up standing in another room with my heart pounding hard and would realize the whispers I hear was from myself speaking. I always wondered if I had some serious mental disorder or if there was something more to it. We live in a 100 year old plus building in NYC. There is a surprisingly large pool of rent controlled tenants. All of whom, for those familiar with the city, are pretty typical Upper West Siders, old, crazy, talk too close to your face types. As these people pass, the management company has got renovating the units and charging market rate which is easily 6-7x the previously charged rate. I bring this up only to show that there is a very diverse economic slash personality population in the building. The person inhabiting our unit prior to us was an older man named John who had lived here since his early years in the 1940s. I had a chance to see the unit before it was renovated and it was bizarre to say the least. It obviously hadn't been touched since the 50s and very poorly maintained. The man had five different rooms all of which he had painted a solid color, including the floor. The dining area was floor to ceiling fire truck red, the living room was black and the bedrooms were Pantone yellow. Floor. 2. Ceiling. According to our neighbors who are also recent additions to the building, he would blast opera music at 2 a.m. He was in his 90s and his boyfriend was in his 30s and they were always screaming at each other. And they lived in complete filth. He was well known on our block mostly because he had lived here his whole live. So that's a lot of background, but I feel like it gives me a reason of why what's happening is happening. After the dust settled from our move into the newly redone apartment, my husband was working late and I was at home on the couch. 
It is positioned in such a way that when sitting on one end, the guest bedroom door is just cut off from your line of sight. I'm with my dog doing a sudoku when I hear the gentle click of the door closing. My dog's head perks up and he gives a low growl. He's a schnauzer, so this isn't uncommon for him if he hears any kind of unexpected noise. I get up and see the guest room door has shut. I go in, all the windows are closed in the apt. But it's an old ass building so I don't think anything of it. I open the door and go back to my puzzle. A few minutes later the door closes again but with a bit more, intention. The sound spooks me but only that I wasn't expecting it. I'm genuinely just thinking it's structural. I open the door again and decide to watch it for a bit and see if I can see where the fault is, it stays perfectly still for about 3-4 to four minutes I turn around to go back to the couch and a shit you not that door immediately slams behind me. Now. I am scared. I whip around to open the door and it is locked. Handle won't budge. It's worth repeating that all these fixtures are brand new. Which kind of feeds the argument of malfunctions but also that it shouldn't? My brain couldn't decide. What happened next is harder to explain with just words. When I have told this part of the story to other people I'm able to demonstrate. But I put my ear against the door, it's a cheaper, modern single panel door, so it looks nice but doesn't feel hearty. And I immediately hear something knock on the other side, as if it were a quick tap with the back side of the hand, using their knuckle. I could hear the position of the hand if that makes sense. And the door gave a gentle vibration. This is when I straight up freaked. Grabbed my dog, decided it was time for his evening walk and called a friend who wouldn't think I was insane. I got back and closed myself in the bedroom. These kinds of events continue. My parents come to stay with us one week and we wake up the next morning and my mom says to me at breakfast. You know you have a ghost, right? I had not mentioned our experiences to others because literally anyone who stayed with us would be in this spooky room and I didn't want them to be on edge. I go totally numb when she says this. I ask her why she thinks that, and her response was I saw him. He was sitting in your desk chair. I don't think it's a mean ghost though. He seemed very old. My grandfather had been in World War II and told us about when himself and a few other soldiers had been separated from his unit and were trying to get to Normandy. They had gone through a clearing in a wooded area but had to drop when they heard something approaching. They were on their bellies in low grass when they saw 20 or 30 German soldiers running across the clearing clearly in a state of panic, then they just froze in mid-step. He said they resembled statues and that some weren't even touching the ground, and that there was no noise whatsoever, even the birds had gone silent. After a few seconds came a loud noise like metal scraping on concrete and the frozen soldiers started to become blurry to the point at which they vanished without a trace. This had been reported by all of the soldiers that were present and all were called to the War Office London after their return to the UK. There, they were pressed on what they saw over the period of a few days, and were taken back to the same spot in France shortly after the war had ended. Surprisingly when they got there, there were other men sharing the same accommodation who reported similar occurrences in the exact same area. They were all taken to the woods and had to describe where and how the events took place. My granddad had said that the entire area was guarded heavily and that part of the ground was heavily excavated. The strangest thing of all the other he said, was that there were hundreds of dogs in the area, just milling around for no apparent reason. They returned to the UK with a gag order ordering them never to speak about any of this. He went back to the same spot in France before he died in 1985 and said that the area had been covered with unmarked warehouses and was guarded by an unusually professional security company. He reckoned they were military. I've tried to find out more about this but can't find any records of it, but I do remember one of the guys who he was with the day, he used to come and visit sometimes and referred to the place as the Splintered Woods. Me and two friends go down and rent a boat on Lake Okeechobee in Florida. We get a 30-foot pontoon boat that has a cover although there's no cabin or anything under the main deck. It's winter in South Florida so it's cool but not cold, thus we decide to just sleep on the boat instead of setting up a camp. We plan on spending three days and two nights on the lake. We spend our time drinking, fishing, and playing games. It's sometime on the second night when I just wake up. I'm still drunk from our previous activities, but my senses are on overdrive and I just feel aware of something. I was sleeping towards the back of the boat while my friends are at the front. It's eerily calm with no waves in the water. We were about 250 feet from shore with land on our port side. I started scanning the tree line looking for, something. Nothing on land, so I scan the water on the port side. Nothing. So I scan the water after the boat. Nothing. I didn't want to disturb my friends up front so I scan the water on the starboard side. That's when I saw it. A skull floating in the water with just the eye sockets and part of the nasal cavity sitting there in the water looking right at me about 50 feet away. An immediate sense of dread took me, 
it was the most scared I'd ever been in my life. Then an even worse feeling took over, calmness and the sudden urge to jump in the water. I had the notion that I would be at home and at peace if I just jumped into the water. Before I could act on it, I think one of my friends stirred in their sleep because I heard a beer bottle start rolling near the front of the boat. This snapped me out of it and the feeling of dread returned. I yelled at them to get up while I moved to start the engines. One doesn't respond at all while the other drunkenly tells me to fuck off. I yell again that I'm not fucking around and nothing. I'm about to pull the starter on the engine slash yell again at my friends when I hear something. I freeze and listen closely, a very faint splashing sound that is slowly getting closer. I forget about yelling at my friends and focus on starting the engine. I pull and pull and pull on the started and nothing. In between the pulls, I hear the splashing getting closer but I don't dare look at the direction of the noise. Finally, the engine starts and I punch it out of there. I must have gone 30 miles before I came to a stop to conserve fuel. Until the sun rose and my friends woke up, I spent the rest of the night scanning the waters just in case, I had to make up a bullshit excuse to explain to my friends why we were so far away from our previous spot. I wanted to tell them, but I doubt they would believe me. When I got home I did some research and apparently Native American tribes possibly used the lake as a burial ground plus there are thought to be the bodies of many victims of hurricanes throughout the decades laying in the lake. Fishermen have found many human bones over the years. This was over six years ago and I have yet to set foot near any body of water larger than my shower. No lakes, oceans, rivers, water parks, pools, hot tubs, nothing. I don't blame you if you don't believe some random guy on the internet. Many times I tried to write it off as my drunk self seeing things. However, I can't write off the feeling of wanting to jump into the water with something, real or not, that struck me with terror just a moment ago. Thinking about that feeling of wanting to go into the water with whatever was out there chills me to this day. My grandmother got a call from her son. He was telling her how much he loved her and that he will be going away. The phone was cutting in and out. This was before cell phones. My grandmother thought this is weird and is out of his character. This was at 10 AM. Right when she hung up the phone, two police officers showed up at her door. They told her that they are sorry to tell her that her son died in a motorcycle accident at 8 o'clock in the morning. My grandmother said that is impossible that she just got off the phone with him. Somewhere during the mid 90s, when I was still in elementary school, my mother and I were sorting through old junk in the attic. We were sitting side by side in a closet that contained these removable panels that allowed access to the attic space on either side of the closet. We had dusty old junk all around us. It was the middle of the day and we were the only two people in the house. Neither of us were speaking much as we were too focused on all the old junk we were discovering. Out of nowhere I clearly heard what sounded like a small child's pleading voice exclaim, Mommy? I don't know how I managed not to shit my pants. I was immediately terrified. I was frozen in place for what seemed like an hour, but was probably only a minute. My mother looked me in the eye and asked, Did you hear it too? I said yes. We never spoke of it again. My boyfriend was born in Russia and he told me that when he was around nine, he went backpacking in the woods with his grandfather. His grandfather used to be in the military and has seen a lot of things in his lifetime, and was not phased by much. In the forest there are some empty cabin type buildings that hikers could stay overnight. There is no supervision, it's just a temporary shelter. One night, my boyfriend and his grandpa were getting ready to sleep in a cabin when the door knocked. His grandpa asked who it was, and a man replied asking to be let in because it's cold outside. His grandpa didn't reply and stood still. My boyfriend, confused by the silence, asked his grandpa why he wasn't moving or opening the door. Knocks were heard on the door again and the man was asking repeatedly to come in. This persisted for a good minute until my boyfriend asked his grandpa again why he wasn't letting the man in. His grandpa told my boyfriend, look at the bottom of the door. And that's when my boyfriend noticed it. There was a gap at the bottom of the door. The moonlight was shining. Knocking could be heard, but there was no silhouette of a person standing on the other side. My boyfriend was so utterly spooked out that he hid under the blankets for the rest of the night. He told me the knocking eventually stopped. To this day he has no explanation for what happened, but tells me that is the creepiest experiences he had. Two years ago in summer, I worked in an open-air mining museum as a tourist guide. Around 80% of the tour is situated underground in an actual 500 years old mine shaft. During my first days, my boss was showing me around the mine, talking about some interesting facts and history so I could remember it and pass it on to the visitors. He had also lectured me about safety precautions. The underground part is around 1, 5 kilometers long, and the deepest you go is until you reach the second horizon, a term used as a floor in a mine, 
which is around 100 meters. The whole place is Mau bigger though, there's 14 horizons in total and the tunnels connect to the surrounding mines in the area. So in reality, there's hundreds of kilometers of tunnels down there, but they are mostly flooded or buried under rocks. There are three telephones underground, each around 500 meters away from another and they can be used to contact the cashier outside on the surface, or other guides that are nearby with their own group. On our way to the third phone, my boss was explaining how I can use it to contact another guide in case anyone gets sick or just wants to get out of the mine, kids often get scared, people with claustrophobia etc. We were passing one of the exhibits which was an old chest used for storing mining tools and we walked down the stairs right after. We have soon reached the third phone when my boss told me that we would now test it by calling each other. He asked me to walk to the first phone located all the way back at the entrance of the mine and call him. On my way back, I was walking up the same stairs and about halfway up, I have noticed something very strange. The chest was definitely closed when we walked past it like two minutes ago, but now it was open. My first thought was that the chest was open all this time and I just haven't noticed, or that the other guides were pulling a prank on the new guy. However, as I was walking towards the chest, it slammed itself shut right in front of me and made a loud noise. I got so scared I ran to the entrance and called my boss on the third phone. I asked him if the chest had been opened before, but he said it's just an exhibit and it had always been closed, because there's nothing in it anyways. I explained what happened and he tried to make a joke out of it, but he also sounded a bit nervous. Later when I told this to my colleagues, one of them said that a similar thing had happened to her before, but she only heard loud bangs as when someone is slamming doors when she was closing the entrance at the end of the day. My parents were one of those couples who legitimately live spending every moment together. They'd socialize with friends together, work together, all of it. My sisters and I figured that when one died, the other wouldn't be long after. We were surprised that our mother lasted a year and a half after our father passed. But during that year and a half, things happened that probably kept my mother going for that long. My father always sat in his rocker slash recliner. There was a touch lamp beside it. After he passed, the chair would sometimes rock a bit like someone was getting in it. The lamp would sometimes turn on by itself, too. The thing that made my mother most convinced that dad was still hanging around was that she'd sometimes hear my dad call out, honey, fix me a cold drink. This was something that he'd frequently say when he was still around. Our mother wasn't the only one to see or hear these things. My sisters, a niece, and my brother-in-law saw them, too. And my dad's dog would wag her tail and look towards his chair when these things occurred. After my mother died, it stopped. Everything. No one hurt my dad anymore. The chair was just a chair. The lamp no longer had a mind of its own. It's been 13 years since my dad passed, and 11 since my mom. My oldest sister still has his chair. She hopes that it will move again on its own, even though it never does. So, about six months after Katrina, the area where we were looking at moving to had really high house prices because of everyone looking for a house, many in the area were destroyed or still being repaired. Because of this, we bought a house that came up to sale as soon as it went onto the market. I was about nine at the time. The house was really strange and a few weird things would happen. Things would randomly fall over, we would get weird feelings around the house. What was strange was the room that I was staying in was decorated as a little girl's room before we moved in but the family didn't have a girl. Anyways, one night I woke up and was in a daze. I always keep a light on when I sleep so I had a table lamp turned on next to my bed stand. At the foot of my bed, there was a silhouette of a man being cast on my wall by the lamp. We painted the wall beige once we moved into the house so the shadow was really noticeable on the bare wall. I didn't think much of this and went back to sleep but once I woke a few hours later, I was so startled that it was hard to ever go to sleep again in that house. We only lived in there for a couple of months before we moved out. It wasn't until after we moved out that we found out what happened in the house. A friend of the family that had lived there previously had murdered their daughter in that bedroom. It was the scariest experience I have ever had and I am so thankful to be out of that house. I fell asleep at my desk at work one day. I must have been very sleepy because I passed out quick. While asleep I saw my nine-year-old nephew jumping on the sofa at my sister's place. He saw me watching him, stopped and had this look of utter shock on his face. After that, I instantly woke up feeling strange and disoriented. It felt real. Later that day, I visit some of my family at my sister's place. My nephew comes running up to me saying that he saw a ghost while he was playing on the sofa earlier. My jaw dropped. I haven't told anyone this. They wouldn't believe me. Only my nephew and I know about it. I wonder if I astral projected. I once had a very odd dream on Thanksgiving. I was sitting in a theater watching three women dance. One was my manager at work, 
One was my best friend, another was a coworker. An angel came and sat down next to me. She had a glowing orb in her arms. She told me to choose which one the orb went to. I dismissed my coworker right away. I told the angel she was too young. My best friend came forward and danced a little. I told the angel my best friend would be a poor choice. She doesn't want kids and had issues. I'm no longer friends with her. My boss came forward and danced. I asked the angel if I had to choose because no one was a good choice. The angel said the orb had to go to someone. So I said my manager. She also had issues, but would love and protect a child with her life. She had also recently been told she could never have a child and it broke her heart. The angel sent the orb to her and it illuminated her dancing for a while until I woke up. A month or so later my manager was suddenly gone a lot. After a week or so she comes back and very excitedly tells us she's pregnant. She mentioned she and her boyfriend had had sex on Thanksgiving with the intention to try. Yay retail TMI. My coworker from the dream laughingly said she had scored on Thanksgiving as well and had a pregnancy scare, but ended up not pregnant. I instantly thought of the weird dream. Later my best friend admitted she'd hooked up with her crazy ex on Thanksgiving. I had a family friend who was like an aunt to me that was handicapped. My family took personal care for her almost every day and there was a point where she lived in our house. Well she ended up staying her last 48 hours at our house and went back to her place dying a couple hours later. One, I will never forget this uneasy feeling of when she left our house, because deep in the back of my mind I felt like she'd be gone for a long time. The next morning is when my mom got the phone call that she passed. When I went to bed that night I had a dream where she was there and I asked her if she was happy and she said yes. Then I asked her if she would still be with us and she just smiled so brightly. We still hear her call my mom's name from the back room every so often. Maybe not weirdest or scariest but that's what I've had less than three. I went on a weekend away staying in an old hall in the UK. I was woken up by a man who was really annoyed I was in his bed. He kept trying to wake me up and in the end I told him to EFF off. He was wearing a thick flannel shirt with a granddad collar. I figured it was a dream but when I got home I thought it was odd. I did some research on the house and it was used as a hospital for soldiers in the war. The garment I remembered the man wearing was similar to the pajamas they were issued in institutions like these. I don't really believe in the paranormal, but the weirdest thing happened to me in high school some 15 years ago. I grew up near the Hot Lake Hotel. If you've never heard of it, I wouldn't be surprised it's in a very small town in eastern Oregon, but it's been on a TV show and has a pretty creepy medical facility slash asylum history. Everyone always joked about it being haunted, and teenagers were always breaking in there on a dare. Anyway, when I was about 15 or 16, a series of ridiculous horror movie cliches happened to me. I was at my friend's grandparents' house, on Elm Street, of course, in the next town over, watching the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre film as the new one had just come out in theaters and a few of us had seen it and wanted to see the original. My friend's mom always joked about the house being haunted. It was on Elm Street, and we were teenagers and thought it would be fun to watch a scary movie there. Anyway, we watch the movie, and all go our separate ways. I get in my friend's car and we start driving back to our town, and the main path home goes right by the Hot Lake Hotel. We put on the radio and Sweet Home Alabama comes on and we joke about that weird coincidence, saying something like hope we don't see any hitchhikers or some shit, if you don't remember, this is a slightly strange coincidence because the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film opens with kids on a road trip, listening to this song when they come across this girl on the road who seems to have run away from the murderers. So, that was weird, but not really scary yet. As we're driving, we see flashing lights, one on top of another, like you would see on one of those train crossings. This didn't seem weird to us, as you do have to cross a train track, but as we neared the track, we realized that though the flashing light was coming from near the tracks, it stopped when we got close and the crossing didn't have one of those flashing signs, just the standard cross. Okay, more weird stuff. We continue on, driving by the Hot Lake Hotel. As we approach, we see a bunch of hooded figures behind the hotel holding candles walking up the hill. At that point, we're fairly freaked out and sped home. Individually, none of those things would seem that weird to me, but as a teenager after watching a scary film and having all of that happen together at once, I was pretty freaked out. I still actually have no explanation for the flashing lights or the weird people with candles, not flashlights. This one happened to my sisters. They used to had a very shitty life, mother always out working and not taking a lot of care of them, getting a lot of fast food to eat instead of cooked meals and overall the house was in an absolute mess 24-7. They had a garage where you actually had to go downstairs and they swear to this day that the garage was haunted. At their preteen years they usually went down there when their mom wasn't at home, 
just to get a scare from some weird voices and whispers. One evening they went down there and as soon as they were near the car, the door upstairs slammed shut. The alarm of the car went off and they swear they saw some weird person watching them through the window of the car, from the other side of it. Face pressed against the window, their hands trying to block the light from the flashing and alarming car, they say they couldn't see the face as the hands casted a shadow over the face. Younger sister immediately darted upstairs finding the door to be shut and locked, just before she turned around to scream for the bigger sister, she was already halfway up the stairs screaming that the person is slowly trying to walk around the car. They screamed and cried and hammered against the door until her mother opened it, as she just came home. Everything silent, car stopped alarming, no person found. Up until today they swear this is what happened and that it was one of a lot of shits going on around that garage. It all started when they played with an Ouija board with their friends and her cousin and friends all say that the garage is haunted. Ouija board, we were young teens. I had finally bought one, and spent a few weekends in a row playing with it. After one weekend when most of my friends left one friend and I played with it. It was answering pretty accurate questions, we would ask it long titles of books to spell out that we may have read. We were a bunch of nerds so we all read a lot. It spelt out long titles of books successfully. It gives me chills right now as I prepare to write out the next part, it started slowly moving in a figure 8. Then it sped up, and sped up some more. Both me and my friend who had our hands on the pallet both at the same time felt in a gradual heat that intensified quickly as it traveled from our fingertips up to our forearms before we stopped and left the basement terrified. We both describing the same experience. Neither of us ever played with that thing again. About 10 years later I remembered that incident and looked up what figure 8 Ouija board could be. Apparently it's a demon named Zozo trying to manifest itself or attach itself and its negative spirit in some form. Maybe a long story but I'm pretty sure I had a telepathic experience. When I was a kid I spent the weekends at my dad's. He would take me home every Sunday evening, stopping off at the petrol station on the way for fuel and cigarettes. As a kid I always had an overactive imagination. At the time, my dad had an electronic organizer he would keep in his glove box. When my dad would fill the car with fuel and go into the store to pay I would always roleplay this fantasy story in my head that my dad was actually an alien disguised as a human and that I was an agent hired to find out his secrets. So while I was waiting in the car I would take his electronic organizer out and pretend it had all his secrets hidden in it and pretend to download them. As I did this I would constantly be looking at the store to make sure he wasn't coming back, and when I saw him leave the store I would quickly put the organizer back and play it cool like nothing happened and sort of have this childish feeling of accomplishment that I had succeeded my mission. Anyway this one time I did all of the above, and when my dad got back in the car he just turned to me with that smile that dads give and just said nonchalantly I'm not really your dad, you know. I'm actually an alien in disguise. He chuckled and started the car. I did my very best to hide uttermost fear and surprise. To this day, I am convinced that for just that one moment we connected thoughts. I struggle to believe that was totally a coincidence. About three years ago, I'm sitting in my living room with my stepmom next to me. Two of our three dogs are sleeping, and one comes up to me with a ball in her mouth. I humor her and throw the ball into the kitchen, watching as she trots after it. She stays out there for a bit and I wonder where she is, but then I hear the sound of her eating so I chuckle at how fat she is and go back to watching TV. Dog comes back into the living room and sits down on the floor, laying her head down but not closing her eyes. Five minutes go by and all three of my dogs shoot their head up and look straight into the kitchen, ears perked and one had their teeth bared while the other two were whimpering. I look at my stepmom and she looks at me, both deciding that we valued our lives and weren't going to see what they were staring at. All of a sudden, my dog's ball comes violently bouncing into the living room, as if someone had just thrown it. It was a gentle roll or a light push, it was thrown. My dogs didn't even pay attention to it. They just kept staring into the kitchen. My stepmom and I didn't move from our spots for hours. Creepiest shit I've ever experienced in my life. My mother was told the house she wanted to buy was haunted, nothing scary just an old man who played the banjo. Mama bought the house because it was perfect and one house down from my granny's. Never heard the banjo. Once I came into the living room and an old man was sitting in a rocking chair with a dog beside him. Mama didn't believe me. Had the flu and was real sick and the same old man walked into my room and felt my forehead. The weirdest part was I felt comforted and not scared. Mama said I was hallucinating. My aunt was visiting, at breakfast she asked me why I was in her room trying to scare her. I told her it wasn't me that the ghost had come to visit her. She chose to sleep on granny's couch. Our youth group spent our summers doing chores for the elderly in our community. 
the lady that played the piano was in her 90s and we were working and cleaning her house. When my sis and I was dusting her piano we noticed photos of an old man. He was our ghost. He built the house in the mid to late 1800s. He was one of the first families to settle that area. I later lived there when my kids were very young and my mother moved in with granny. My three-year-old daughter would have conversations with nobody around. I asked who they were, she said Megan, a name she never heard before because we didn't know anyone by the name. The conversation started changing and asked her who she talking to. She said Megan brought over Amber and her cousin. My house in Vietnam has a small altar hanging up on the wall. When I was small, I always had a dream about climbing up on the altar, sitting there, in first person view, and looked around like I was a king during my sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night peeing myself. This happened every day for like 4 to 5 years, until I asked my parents to move our bedroom somewhere else. After that I didn't have that weird dream anymore. It was about 20 years ago. 6 years ago I came back to Vietnam visiting my parents. The bedroom was occupied, I came back with my grandma and auntie, so I slept in that old bedroom one more time thinking that the weird dream when I was young was just a dream after all, so it would have stopped already. Surprised. I had that dream again, and I was so fucking scared I'd rather going to sleep in the living room instead of that bedroom. Yeah, weird dream, and that bedroom. My grandma always used palm olive original dish soap. Her house always smelled like palm olive and buttered toast. The smell of that soap is pretty nostalgic for me, as she used to watch me after school. Well in September 2017 she really was starting to decline and I knew she probably wouldn't survive the year. My grandma and I facetimed in early October, my dad helped her, and I could tell she was totally out of it. I was out of the country until December, for work. In the sadness and nostalgia I bought that soap, palm olive, to delve into nostalgic comfort just after the facetime call. Around mid-November the bottle of soap was almost empty and my grandma had gone into a nursing home as she was nearing the end. I was nearing the end of the bottle and my grandma had officially gone into hospice care, aka comfy deathbed. The nursing home had shit conditions as they all seems to, and my family just wound up taking care of her in the nursing home, so they moved her to be comfortable. I was really saving the last bit as for whatever reason I imagined it was her lifeline and my aunt was flying from FL to NY to say goodbye one last time to her mom. Well the night before my aunt would be able to make it, my GF, at the time who was visiting me, was doing the dishes and used the last bit of soap. The next day after my girlfriend used the soap up, I get a call from my dad around 12 PM my time, 6 AM US time. It was wicked early for him to be up and calling, so I knew it was not good. My grandma had passed away in the night slash early morning. The same day the soap was used up. I spent some time in the mid 2000s in the Balkans, and particularly in the Republic of Macedonia. Macedonia is a beautiful place, but I always felt in subtle darkness when I was there, like something's behind you but when you look nothing's there. I was staying in south of a town called Azamati on a lake called Lake Prespa. This lake is beautiful and it shares borders with Greece and Albania now. I decided I to take some time away from my team and I stayed in a little rented shack of a place on the shore of Lake Prespa to clear my head. I watched the sun set and after it got dark I decided to take a walk on the shore. As I was walking, I heard a woman crying. She had a scarf over her head and she was standing with her ankles in the water. I tried to act like I didn't see her and walk past, but she turned to me and started speaking to me in Bulgarian. She asked me to please help her. I stopped and didn't move any closer, but asked her if she was all right in Bulgarian. She said my son and daughter are in the lake, I need them I need them. Help me please. I was confused, because as I looked around the shoreline was deserted. I saw no one, and the water was so still it looked like glass. I looked both directions up and down the shore, and I asked again, what is wrong? The woman said again my son and daughter are in the lake. They threw them in the lake. Please please help. She was panicked. I started to feel a rush of adrenaline and told her I'll go get help. I jogged up the shoreline but saw no one and there were no houses or anything. I felt panicked like something was wrong but I didn't know what it was. I turned back and tried to find the woman again but I never saw her again. I must have looked for hours. I finally went back to my little cabin but I couldn't sleep. At around 3 am I heard a crying sound from outside. I jumped up thinking that the woman may be out there again. When I got outside I saw no one. The crying intensified and sounded like it was just in the distance. Then the voice crying multiplied into what sounded like hundreds of voices. They were so pained, like the cry of someone that didn't want to die. It shook me to my core. I went back to my cabin, packed up and sat wide awake until the sun came out. 
I took the first minibus out of the place and never went back. I'll wake up sometimes thinking about that place. The sound was so so sad. I still wonder what it was. I've had a couple in my life. When I was younger we lived in a different house. One time my parents were out doing errands and I was home for the weekend. I remember I was walking down the central hallway to the house and I came in view of the main closet. It was cracked open ever so slightly, but the light switch, it was flipping up and down turning the light on and off, over and over again. I audibly muttered what the hell? And before I could even think it stopped and the door slammed shut. The other experience was actually about five weeks ago in my current residence. I was laying in bed waking up from a dream. I sat there thinking when I felt the distinct sensation of someone very lightly stroking my shoulder. I was alone and have no romantic partner, but I stupidly thought it was just the vent near my bed going off or something. Suddenly a deep, slightly garbled male voice whispers in my ear hey. And I leapt out of bed. When I looked at the door to my bedroom where you can the light from the hallway coming into my bedroom, on the floor in front of the door I saw a faint shadow of a broad man in a kind of western standoff pose before it walked into the shadow outside. I left the house and slept at a hotel. Hasn't happened since, but I clearly remember being awake in that moment and not on drugs or alcohol, neither of which I've ever done, freaky shit. I've experienced all kinds of stuff throughout my life, many many stories, but I'll tell this one. I have a shadow man who has followed me my whole life. Not scary, more of a protective spirit. Although it can be really startling if you're not expecting it. Friends and family have all seen him or have had experiences with him. Wherever I move he follows. A friend's mom, who I believe was the only truly psychic person I've ever met, told me his name is Michael but I've never been able to confirm that. First experience I can remember I was about 5 years old. I was supposed to be taking a nap one afternoon, but I wasn't tired, so I let out a bored sigh. Then from the corner of my room I hear another deep, heavy sigh. Like a full grown man. I remember my eyes getting huge and teary, looked in the corner, nothing there but my Donald Duck stool. I pulled the covers over my head. He roamed around the house. You'd see him looking around doorways, kinda peeking at you. He would walk up behind folks. You'd get the feeling that someone was behind you and wanted to walk by, so you'd step aside but there'd be nobody there. Other people would see the reaction but never saw anybody behind the person. Footsteps upstairs when nobody else was home, especially on the basement stairs. One night, my aunt was over to babysit me when I was a baby. When my folks came home, she was standing in the drive with me, completely freaked out. She told my parents there was somebody in the basement who kept going up and down the stairs. It gets more active if I'm distressed. I had back surgery in my 30s and every single person who came over to help me had at least one experience. He spoke in my sister's ear to let her know I was waking up. He moved a photo of my best friend from the hallway wall to a table in the living room the day she came over to help. That one really tripped my friend out. She asked me why I had moved the pic, I told her it wasn't me. It had been on the wall for years. I told her it was probably because he was grateful to her for helping out. Many folks saw him all the time in that house, too, going up and down the hall, peeking around doorways, going down the stairs, walking past the back door. You'd even hear the side gate open, then see a shadow at the door, but nobody's there. We've moved again and he followed, but I think he's watching over my daughter more than me now. She had a friend stay over a few weeks ago. When my daughter woke up in the morning her friend was scared and said she didn't sleep well. She said she saw a man leaning against the door frame. She closed her eyes and when she looked again the man was right in her face. Then a minute later she saw him sitting on my daughter's bed. Then he disappeared. She stayed up till the sun rose, poor kid. I'm glad he's watching over my daughter here, because there are some not so friendly spirits in this house that we've been dealing with. But that's a whole other story and this is long enough already. I work in a haunted facility. It is a laser tag arena. The building itself was said to be haunted by a man who committed suicide, over a woman, in the parking lot. Since I have worked there, this ghost has decided that it enjoys picking on me and scaring the hell out of me. I won't bore you with the small occurrences, however I have had shoes thrown at me, a ladder that I was standing on get pushed like 3 inches, and I have audio recordings where a coworker and I are asking questions. We were split up, but in sight of each other, nobody else in the entire arena, and said if you're downstairs make a knocking sound and a knock clear as day can be heard. Another time, a co-worked and I were doing another recording session, but we left her phone upstairs and stayed together. She asked if it was the ghost of the man who killed himself in the parking lot, and there was a noise louder than anything I can describe, and we ran out, leaving her phone in the arena recording. We later retrieved it, and it had been recording for 20 minutes. 
We listened back, and you could hear footsteps and shuffling, and all kinds of things during the time that nobody was in the arena. It's crazy stuff. I still have the recordings on my phone. I have more stories if anyone is interested. I work as a tour guide in an abandoned hospital dating back to 1910. Sometimes when I don't have a tour or I have a long break I'll go and explore some areas of the hospital that aren't on the tour route. It was a pretty calm, summer day and I had about a two hour break so I went exploring with another tour guide. We entered in through the administrative building, which is right in the middle of the hospital, went upstairs and walked out into the long corridor on the second floor, an area where nobody goes. As soon as we stepped out into the hallway a door on the left side started to open, as if they knew we were coming. We thought it was really weird because there was no wind at all and this is a big metal door but we said whatever and went through the door anyway. We then made it down the hall to a ward but the door was shut. This was the ward I brought my friend along to see because it has some original fixtures. I discovered it about a week before when I was exploring but didn't experience anything like this. So I go to open the door and it won't open. It was like it was locked but nobody has keys to the place so it couldn't have been and I was just in there a week ago. I tried to throw all my force into the door but it just wouldn't open so we left it alone. Clearly whatever was in there didn't want us in there. We continued down the hall going in and out of hospital wards along the way and that's when we started hearing noises. We heard just random bumps and clanging like someone was dropping something or purposely making noise. Nobody else was in the building besides us, as far as we know, and they definitely weren't upstairs and these noises sounded close. This is when I turned to my friend and go do you hear that? Just to make sure I'm not crazy and she replies yes but I'm ignoring it so that became our mantra for the next 20 minutes. We finally make it all the way down the hall, look at the last ward and start walking back. This is when we start hearing footsteps behind us. We turn around, nobody is there. So we walk a little faster and once again we hear the footsteps but this time we also hear a noise that sounds like someone took a stick and lightly ran it across an old radiator. We stop and turn around again, Nobody is there but there's a radiator maybe 3 feet behind us against the wall. At this point we're speed walking and we get back to the door that was opening for us in the beginning. This time it's shutting in our faces. We went into a full sprint and through the door opened before it could completely close and ran down the stairs through the admin building back outside. We both had tours later that day and mine was by far the most nerve wracking tour I've ever given. I still get nervous when I'm on the second floor. One night, I was about 15 16 I was up at 11 pm doing an essay. This wasn't unusual for me, and I'd often stay up until 2 am, so I wasn't even tired. I was sitting at the computer desk in our living room. Directly to my right was the hallway that led to all of our rooms. I had a pretty good view of my brother's room, which was the first door on the right, but nothing past that. Being the eldest of my siblings, my brother and sister had been sent to bed long ago, which allowed me to work on my essay in peace. Out of the corner of my eye, I see my brother dash out of his room down the hallway. I yelled after him, telling him to go to sleep, but he didn't respond. I just rolled my eyes and got back to work. He did it again. I was getting pretty irritated at this point. My siblings often thought bedtime meant playtime, and my brother being 10 years old with ADHD made late night antics a pretty typical thing. I told him if he did it again I'd go after him. Of course, he did it again, and I'm a woman of my word. I stood up pissed, and started stomping down the hall after him. I'd barely passed his room when I had a brief feeling of dread. I stopped dead, turned around, and walked into his room and flicked on the light. I could see his figure in his bed. I was pretty spooked by that point, but didn't put it past him that he could have jumped in bed and pulled up his covers. I walked further into his room and pulled back his sheets. He was out cold, and he wasn't even wearing the right clothes. It had only been about 10 seconds since I'd gotten up from the computer desk. There was absolutely no way the little boy I'd seen running down the hallway was my brother. I turned around, walked back to the desk, and finished my essay. I never saw the little boy again. I was at my friend's house in Arizona and this was on a native reservation so his grandma was telling us all about these stories and stuff and somehow we got to skinwalkers. I didn't believe her so I kinda just nodded through the tail and went on with the day. Well that night my friend and I decided we wanted some snacks so we drove down to the local 7 to 11. We picked up the snacks and all was well so we started to drive back home. About 5 minutes into the ride we turned down this dark road with only desert surrounding it, our headlights being the only lights illuminating the road where we are. Out of the corner of my eye I see a pair of yellow eyes off on my side of the car, and we pass right by them. I think to myself, oh this is probably just a deer everything is fine. Then it starts running towards us, and we're going like 60 miles per hour and it was catching up. 
I saw it out of my mirror and at that moment I saw that it was a dog running on its back two feet right at us. Just to paint the picture of what it looked like it was like a man-sized greyhound with the rib cage clearly visible as if it hadn't eaten in forever. Soon it was at the side of the car and thankfully I had the window rolled up. It ran beside us for a solid 30 seconds and then it turned its head to look straight at me, while keeping up the pace. Then suddenly we passed a large patch of dead bushes and it vanished into them just as soon as it came. I've never gone back there since. I didn't witness this, but I have a story. So I work in a hospital not a huge one but big enough, 800 employees. So one of the security guards tells me a couple of stories he has witnessed here. He said that the reception of the hospital gets phone calls on random nights from one of his rooms, and every time they investigate of course nobody is in there. Creepy but not overwhelming. Nesty tells a story of one time he was making his rounds throughout the night he walks through the OB department he comes across a pregnant lady walking down the hall and notices she seems to be in pain slash distress. He asked her if she is okay or needs help and she says no she is fine. He tells her he will find her nurse and let them know she out walking and she just kind of nods to him as if to say whatever. So he goes looking for her nurse, and finds a OB nurse and tells her that there is a patient walking in the hall, and she looks at him like he is nuts, because apparently there are no patients up there at this time. So he goes and looks at the security footage, and sure enough finds himself walking through the hall, and stopping an OB and standing there talking, but nobody is there with him. Spooky. This happened about a year ago. At that time, I believed paranormal experiences to be BS. My then three-year-old daughter would tell me about Ghost Boy. Her seven-year-old brother always fell asleep first and she told me that a little boy would appear most nights and gently rub slash scratch his back when my son would fall asleep. One day, she was telling me that ghost boy is mean to her when she tells him to get away from her brother. My daughter is a very spoiled little sister and big brother deals with her very lovingly. I joked and told my daughter maybe this ghost boy was mean to her because she was mean to her brother. Fast forward about three months later and we haven't heard about ghost boy in a while. I was woken up one night, and in the dark I could make out the shape of my son standing at the end of the bed on the left side near me. I called out his name and he took off running. Little weird but hey at least my bed space was still mine for the moment. I turned over to my right and was surprised to feel a warm little lump at the foot of my bed. I investigated the lump to determine which child it was so I could return them to their bed. It was my son. Although it was dark, I was certain the figure that had just ran away was a boy. This figure was the same size as my son and not smaller like my daughter. I carried my son back to his room and, and found my daughter fast asleep in her bed still tucked in warmly underneath her blankets. I ran back to my room and, and hid under my covers, unable to return to sleep. The next morning, I asked my daughter if she remembered her ghost boy. According to my daughter, ghost boy was still making nightly visits, but she was now afraid of him and, and hid under her covers during his presence each night. When we returned home that evening, we prayed in my kid's room and haven't heard another peep since. I sure do believe now. I lived in Japan for a while in a small one-bedroom apartment opposite a park. Some nights I used to walk through the park to a convenience store down some streets on the other side. There were closer stores, but I liked the chili dogs at that store and would walk the extra five minutes or so through the park. There was an area of the park that had a small winding pathway leading through some tall trees. The trees were spread out and on one side of the path was the street and the other side there was an open baseball field. The path was slightly elevated. One summer night I was walking towards the path and noticed a lady standing one to two meters off the path on a mound of grass. There was nothing particularly odd about her appearance. She was dressed in an 80s style blouse and jacket, a long dress, had shoulder length hair and a pale face. She was facing some apartments on the street. As I approached her I said Kambanwa, good evening. She did not respond. I got closer and stopped. Her eyes were fixated on this apartment and she looked upset. Again, I said Kambanwa. No response. Daijobu Disika? Are you okay? Silence. I shrugged my shoulders and kept walking forward. After about seven steps I froze and realized holy fuck that lady had no feet. I turned around and she was gone. Just vanished. In the space of a few seconds she was nowhere to be seen. There was nowhere for her to go in that amount of time. I checked behind every tree and looked out onto the street in every direction. Nothing. I stood there for several minutes confused as to where this lady went. And to this day I believe I encountered a Japanese ghost. This happened to my friend Russ a few months ago. He had just lost his wife, Mari. She was only 26 when she passed. Just a few weeks prior to her passing they had bought a new house and I had been helping them move everything in for a while even after she died. 
There would be days, I'd just let myself in whether Russ was home or not and start unpacking boxes for him, paint the rooms that needed it, etc. He was often really depressed about Mari and didn't have the energy to do a lot of it himself. They had multiple dogs that were Russ and Mari's life. When I say for babies I mean it to the fullest definition of the word, so I'd stop by to also help take care of the pups. One day Russ called me and asked what I stopped in for. I obviously asked what he meant, as I hadn't been there at all that day. Russ didn't say anything and I thought he actually hung up on me or something, he was that quiet on the other end of the line. I asked him again why he was wondering and I could hear the nervousness in this otherwise fearless man's voice. He explained to me he was in the shower when heard all the dogs barking like crazy as they always do when someone is anywhere closer to the house than the driveway. He simply thought I was coming over. He then heard a very clear woman's voice say it's okay Gunner, one of their dogs, it's just me. Immediately all the dogs stopped their new guest panic ritual. This furthered Russ's belief that it was just me coming in. When he got out of the shower he expected to see me somewhere in the house but all the doors were still locked, nothing was touched, and so it prompted him to call and ask what I came in for just a second for. It was not me, like I said I had not been there all day, and Russ is not a normal supernatural believer by any means so I know he heard what he says he heard. I'd like to think that it was Mari just giving a hand moving her things too. This isn't my story but my mom's. She was sitting years ago in a coffee shop in a mall with my dad. It was Christmas time and they were shopping. They stopped to rest and it was while they were in the coffee shop my mom found herself admiring another customer. It was a woman in her 20s with long blonde hair. As she was thinking how pretty the woman's hair was, a picture suddenly materialized beside her. It was of the woman in a coffin with her long blonde hair now tied into a braid and draped over one side of her body. The picture remained for a few seconds and then dissolved. Mom kind of brushed it off as nothing, but it creeped her out enough that she decided to leave the mall. Fast forward seven years later. My parents were divorcing, mom was at her attorney's office. The meeting was almost over. As the attorney was talking, a picture materialized on the wall behind her. She was a stern looking woman, dark clothes, unsmiling, professionally styled hair, exactly how you might imagine a stereotypical lawyer. The picture my mom was seeing on the wall behind the attorney was of her in a beautiful garden. She was wearing soft, light-colored clothing. Her hair was worn down in curls around her face. She was smiling. Happiness and light radiated from the image. In her head my mom was freaking out, she was trying to focus on what the attorney was saying but couldn't tear her eyes off the picture on the wall behind her. When she got up to leave, she decided she couldn't go without asking the attorney about it. She warned her it would sound crazy, but said she'd just had some kind of vision about her and relayed the details. She was expecting her attorney to say she hated gardening and lived in a high-rise apartment. Instead, the attorney turned to her, visibly stunned and with tears in her eyes told her she did in fact love gardening. It turned out that flowers were her lifelong passion and that those were exactly the kind of clothes she liked to wear at home. Could have all been coincidence admittedly, but it never happened again after that. Weird how the first one was so dark and the second mundane. Worked at a hotel that was supposed to be haunted. A lot of weird stuff happened on graveyard shift. I'd get calls from empty rooms, including rooms that were always locked against guests, the elevator would move on its own, saw strange movements and shadows on the cameras, things occasional got moved around when no one else should be there, and would occasional hear weird sounds when the hotel should be mostly empty. Bonus story. Was finishing up some stuff one night at the art slash music building at a college campus. I'd heard all about a haunted piano on the third floor. I had been working the stage lights during a performance, and was the last one to leave after putting up the last of the equipment when I heard someone playing chopsticks. I figured someone was messing with me, but the piano had been moved to a different room where there was only one way in and out that I knew about. I opened the doors and the lights were off and no one was there. I even turned on the lights and looked for a minute because I didn't want to get in trouble for leaving someone inside when I was supposed to lock up. When I didn't find anyone, I turned off the lights and left. As soon as I was walking away from the door I heard a sound like someone bashed the keys on the piano. I stared at the door for a second, decided that today was the perfect day to be a coward and I noped out. I called campus police and told them I thought someone was in the building but they were hiding and let them deal with it. Never found out what happened with that. My parents and maternal grandmother all passed away within 5 years of each other. I got married about 3 or so years after they died. I had a dream about 2 months before my wedding. All four of us were sitting in my grandma's living room. She was in her favorite green chair and my parents were on the couch directly across from me. I told them everything that had been happening in my life. Told them all about my husband and what my kids have been up to. Everything that had happened since they had gone. 
It's felt like days and it was so good to see them. They all smiled and told me how much they loved me. That we had their blessing for our wedding and life together. They were proud of what me and my kids and siblings were up to. I got to hug my parents right before I woke up. It was so vivid and real. In my dream, it smelled like my grandmother's house always did. Like potpourri and fresh bread and coffee. Their faces were young and healthy and they were so happy to see me. When I woke up for real that day, I felt so peaceful and glad I'd gotten to visit them again. I also cried harder than I had in a very long time. I hadn't realized how much I still miss them. Grief and loss suck sometimes. It's like a black hole in your life that doesn't leave when you try to fill it up, it just stays varying shades of grey. I was a young toddler at the time and me and my siblings, my sister 12 and brother 6, were investigating the attic in one of my old houses. It was a pretty weird house we settled into so my dad could take a job in the area. It had so many different levels. One for the living room, one for the kitchen, two or three separate sets of staircases and a window in the master bedroom opening up into the living room with a pretty big drop down. So they were walking up the stairs like normal. I was barely able to crawl up the stairs and couldn't walk down them myself since my legs were too little and I was scared I would fall. They got to the top before me. When I was maybe three steps from the top my sister screamed and said she saw a girl in teddy bear pajamas in the mirror and ran downstairs with my brother. I couldn't run since I couldn't even get down the stairs at the time. I ended up curling up and laying down next to the stairs with my face against the edge of one. At the time I thought if I couldn't see something it wouldn't be able to see me. I barely remember what happened, the last thing I remember was my mother carrying me down after however long it took for her to get home. We moved shortly after and there were times I would set toys down and they would go missing. I've visited the house since almost 15 years later and a weird lady with a lot of mannequins in the front of the house lives there now. The whole place was just so weird. When I was 16 I was riding dirt bikes with a very good friend, his older brother, younger brother, and their dad at a place called Top of the World in Colorado. This place is in the middle of nowhere. 4x4 four four trail leads in, about 10 miles, and the trail we're riding is another 10 miles to a destination and back. No houses for at least 50 miles, early 90s. Halfway into the trail, jeeps can't get there, single track with wall on one side and cliff on the other for at least a mile, we come to a small valley and it starts raining lightly. We come around a corner and standing in the middle of the trail is a man dressed in what I could only describe as a late 1800s to early 1900s tuxedo complete with tails and a top hat, and an umbrella standing in the middle of the trail. As we ride by this guy every one of us slowed way down and went around him, watching him the whole time. The man was clear as day, looked like he was in his early 20s, and had pale blue eyes which he kept fixed on the ground ahead of him, those eyes never left the same spot to look at us. When we got to the end of the trail we all ripped our helmets off and freaked out. All of us were certain we'd just seen a ghost. On the ride back there was no sign of him, no footprints or anything, we spent a good half hour searching that spot. I haven't talked to any of those guys in at least 20 years, but I guarantee if I ran into any of them and brought this up, they'd go white. Anytime someone brings up ghosts, a subject I'd normally be really skeptical about, I immediately can't help but think of this. It is so fresh in my mind, it's like it happened last week. Back in what I think was my kindergarten or first grade year, I was living in an apartment with my mom. I'm just sitting in my room playing a game when my mom screams and calls for me. I come right in front of the door of her room, my mom is more towards the back of her room and right in front of the door is a towel just floating there as if it was thrown over someone's arm. I remember being so excited, thinking we have a ghost butler. Meanwhile my mom was scared, trying to explain that she closed her door and the towel slipped off the doorknob, but it just stayed up with nothing around it. I just went back to my room like things were normal. I'm assuming my mom just grabbed the towel or knocked it down, but we stayed at my grandparents that night and moved out of the apartment not too long after. Of course no one believed either of us about that story when we tell it. Thinking back on it, I think now I would be less excited than kid me was and more confused slash worried if I saw that again. I've seen three things in my life that I can't explain. First one I saw when I was 12, I lived in South Texas at the time so I was very grounded in my belief that everything could be explained. While I was walking through the woods I found a little shack, as any 12 year old kid would I went inside and looked out the window all I could see was a boomerang shaped blob thing with a wing on the bottom and top of the curve. It flew away at high speed after I saw it. Second thing that happened was when I was 16, I was walking around in the woods about 30 miles north of the shack. I was carrying a .38 special revolver my dad had given me, there was a deer that had very little fur stood on two legs like a human and had massive antlers, like probably 3 feet across 2 feet tall kind of massive. 
When I see the thing it started to come at me I pulled the revolver and shot, I hit the deer monster thing and it turned and ran, I tracked it for a while but I never found the body. Final thing I've seen that cannot be explained. I was once again walking around in the woods but I was more east of the deer monster sighting. I was carrying my 1911 that I had bought recently. All of a sudden I got to a clearing and I started to feel a sense of dread. As I walked further into the clearing I start to cry for no reason other than the sense of dread and grief I was feeling. When I stopped to wipe my eyes I looked up and I saw a bear. This is in South Texas and I knew for sure there was no bears in Texas so I pull my gun just in case and the bear screams at my like a girl saying while screaming you should not be here leave now I still don't know what I was seeing but I booked it out of there. So three years ago I started my freshman year in college. About two weeks before move in, my gram suddenly got hospitalized and nobody knew what was happening because she was the most healthy and active 90 year old you could ever meet. I visited her every day that I could but the visits were often short because all my relatives were visiting her and I barely got a chance to really be with her. The day before I moved away to college, I finally found a pocket of time where I could see her just me and her before I was away and didn't know when I would see her again. I always believed that the universe or God talks to you in mysterious ways. When I walked into the room, she was watching a documentary on Africa, a place that we both shared a love for and I went there a month prior to her getting sick. I sat down with her, and like she woke up from a dead sleep, she asked the nurse if she could have her nose air thing removed so she could talk to me. She always called me little Audrey because she thought I looked like Audrey Hepburn and I still remember this as clear as day, she said my little Audrey, I'm so proud of you and I can't wait to see all the things you'll do one day. Right after that, the nurse said that I needed to leave because visiting hours were over. That was the last time she spoke and the last time I saw her. So I move in and I'm lonely, my roommate sucks, and I can only think about my gram. I go to orientation by myself and while I'm walking out of my dorm, a guy stopped me and said has anyone ever told you that you look like Audrey Hepburn? And right after that I got an immediate waft of my gram's perfume. I was really wigged out but tried not to think about it. Two hours later, my mom called me saying that my gram passed away right when my orientation started but she didn't want to call me because she didn't want me to be distracted. 9am when the guy told me I looked like Audrey Hepburn and I smelled my gram's perfume. Furthermore, when I went home that weekend for her funeral, I went to her house to help clean it out. My mom told me to take something of hers for me to keep with me, so I decided to take the picture of her in Kenya at the equator. As I was taking the picture down from the shelf, I heard a thud. The ornament that I gave her when I was in Africa that nobody could find just out of nowhere landed next to my feet. I like to believe that she's my guardian angel to this day and always reminds me that she's with me in very unique ways, some that are very unexplainable. That's one of my more pleasant experiences with the strange side of the universe. Weird shit always happened in my family's house. Small stuff such as hearing footsteps and bigger stuff like my stepmom waking up and seeing two women holding hands in front of her closet. I still remember it because she grabbed my stepbrother and moved out for about six months. Here's my weirdest story. My best friend was like family and he was one of those people who didn't have to knock when he came over. He kinda just came in and that was the norm after a few years of him consistently visiting. Well my room had a spare bed just for him. I got a new one and the room needed furniture so I kept it for him when he stayed. Outside of my bedroom door is this small hallway, and we had some books out there, a chair, and in the chair was one of those old, super heavy CRT TVs. It had not moved for months. So my friend and I are sleeping and it's around 3am. It sounded like something exploded outside of my door. We both jump out of our beds wondering what the hell was going on. We open the door and about 6 feet from its original spot is that TV, sitting right at my feet. This thing is too heavy for a single person to move. Our one pet was an outdoor cat who was not inside at the time. The only other people home were my dad and stepmom, both of which ran upstairs to figure out what the noise was. We have no explanation for it still and that's not the last creepy thing anyone has experienced in my old house.